This is an overview of the book of Haggai. Haggai is one of the prophets to the restored remnant after the Babylonian captivity. So that would mean the book is post-exilic. That sounds complicated. However, that is all it means. It just means Haggai was a prophet after the Babylonian captivity and he was to the restored remnant. So he exhorted the remnant to rebuild the walls and temple of Jerusalem. That is the historical view. So that would mean Haggai lines up with Ezra and Nehemiah. Read those books and you'll see Haggai lines up with those guys. And you'll notice that he's even mentioned in Ezra chapter 5 and verse 1. And in Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. So that's the historical view. Now, the doctrinal and prophetical view is God's promise to restore his remnant house and his glory in the future. And you're also going to see some things about the second coming and the millennium, of course, just like you do in all these minor prophets. The devotional view is a call to the church, to us. This is devotional view. Just what we can get, at it, get out of it for ourselves applying it to us practically speaking, you could see a call to the church in the last days to see God's glory in their life, to be conscious that we need to be building something to present to the Lord. Or even if you've wrecked your testimony, start over and rebuild. And today you can be like Haggai and encourage others to keep building. And this book has two chapters, 38 verses, 1131 words and Haggai means festive or born on a festival or festival of God it is 535 BC is the time period historically in chapter 1 you have a command to rebuild Haggai is exhorting the people the restored remnant to rebuild Haggai 1 7 and 8 thus saith the Lord of hosts so he's a prophet. He's telling them what the Lord says. Consider your ways. And we need to do that. Consider our ways. Is it right? Is what we're doing right? Are we getting busy for God? Verse 8. Go up to the mountain. Bring wood. And build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Back then they were commanded to build something physical. Today you need to build something spiritual. Specifically something you're going to present to the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. It says, 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Every day you need to be conscious that your good works are building something. If you haven't been building, then I encourage you to get busy for God, and you need to be like Haggai and encourage people to rebuild or keep building. And I hope and pray that the Lord will steer you up as he did the people back then. Haggai 1.14, And the Lord steered up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Today God isn't dwelling in a temple made with hands, but in you. 1 Corinthians three sixteen and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So today God has his people as the temple. And you need to be conscious of this throughout your Christian life. You need to do work in the house of God, your body, get to moving. You need to be building something. In chapter 2, you have a call to courage. You have prophecies on the second coming and the millennium as well. As we talked about, all of these short minor prophets are 
they seem outdated to people, but they're more up-to-date than your newspaper, more up-to-date than all the news channels, more up-to-date than your news feed on Facebook because they're about things in the future. Prophetically, they show us the second coming when Jesus Christ comes back with us. And it shows us the millennium where we'll rule and reign with Jesus. But the word comes to Haggai in chapter 2. A word of encouragement to endure. A word of encouragement to rebuild. And things about the future second coming. Haggai 2, 1 through 4. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai. And the word comes to you just like it came to Haggai, except it comes to you in a book. He didn't have the Bible back then, a complete Bible, but you have a complete Bible. But the word of the Lord came, word of the Lord came to him, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory, and how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, said the Lord, and work, for I am with you, said the Lord of hosts. It's the same thing for us. We should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And the Lord is with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He lives in you. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. So be strong and keep building or rebuild if you've made a mess of things. Haggai 2, 6 and 7. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill the ho this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. So the Lord is going to shake the earth when he touches down on it with ten thousands of his saints. Then when he sets up his kingdom, the desire of all nations shall come. The nations that, that don't desire the Lord today. They don't desire it today. America, the most Christian nation on the planet, doesn't even desire the Lord. But they will in the millennium. They're going to come worship him or they're not going to get any rain. Haggai 2, 22 through 23, And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots, and those that ride in them, and the horses and the riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother, in that day. That phrase, in that day, is associated with the day of the Lord, the second coming. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. So you see, Zerubbabel is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is governor over the Jews who return from captivity. God's chosen signet. He's a good picture here in this little book of Haggai of our Lord Jesus Christ. But Haggai, two chapters. It's a short book. You can read it in probably 10 minutes. You can memorize it in probably a week. It's got some great stuff in it. But I hope this has helped you understand the book of Haggai a little bit more than you did before you listened to this study.